This episode of Android Invasion is brought to you by Mt. Gox and BitPay, Bit-Pay and Mezzi Grill and Carpe VM. Redmond to Cupertino, we have a problem. It's spreading. We're losing control over the entire system. We're being invaded. Invaded by air. Uh, there's nothing we can do. It's too late. Hey, and welcome to another episode of Android Invasion, uh, post-Hurricane Irene. But um, luckily, uh, nothing too bad happened here. Our condolences and thoughts go out to anybody who was affected by it. I know we didn't get hit that hard, but a little more south, like Virginia, North Carolina, they did get hit a lot harder than us. Uh, so condolences go out there. Today we're going to be talking about um, a little quick uh, Android news update, and then we're going to get into some uh, a couple of Wi-Fi applications. Mostly uh, they're concerned with uh, Wi-Fi security or security auditing, or as it's also called, uh, penetration testing, which is mostly for uh, network security folks. Uh, but let's get uh, to it with the Android news update. Uh, first, we have that Android is now the most targeted mobile platform for malware, which actually makes sense uh, compared to Apple's platform, the iOS. Um, uh, Apple is very strict and uh, very controlling about what could be released on their market. They do a code review process, and if they don't like one thing about it, they're going to reject it from the market. Android is comp completely different in that it's a, a completely open market. Um, so with an open market, there are going to be some inherent risks. You know, people are going to try to take advantage of that. And um, basically what's going on is uh, they're using social engineering techniques uh, to get you to download these malicious applications. A lot of times uh, they'll copy another developer's work, release it as their own, and you know, it has this hidden code in there. Um, and a lot of times, people don't know this, but you could download one of these um, malicious applications and you don't have to run the thing for it to actually do bad things. It could use what's called a, a state um, in the phone, something like receiving a phone call, sending an email out, screen turning on, you name it. Um, any one of those things could trigger, uh, you know, that malicious application. So just because you downloaded it and did not run it does not mean that you're safe. Um, there's some bad developers out there, um, you know, that they're pretty well known uh, for releasing applications like this. I'll just go over the list very quickly. It's uh, Magic Photo Studio, um, Mango Studio, which saddens me because mangoes are my favorite. So they're tarnishing that name. Uh, we have the ET Teen which I don't know what that means, Bigu, um, Droid Plus, and Glue Moby. Uh, these are developers that are known to release applications under the guise of somebody else's legitimate work. Uh, they just keep the same name. Uh, obviously, you'll see that the developer is different. So, you know, do your homework, do your fact checking. Um, you could use services like AppBrain uh, from the Android market. Uh, they have reviews on top of the regular reviews from the Android market. Uh, which would be safe. And then another way um, is that they send out unsafe web links. Uh, you might get that in, uh, in some of your SMSs or text messages. You'll see it's a random weird number that you've never seen before with a weird you know, URL in there. And you'll be surprised. People actually do click it. So if you get one of those, don't click it. Um, it could be some sort of exploit or something to get a malicious program installed. and. We don't want that. Um, and then I just wanted to give you, uh, uh, they also have, um, if we could pull that up, uh, there is a uh, new mobile malware for this quarter. It's a pie chart. And it, just to give you an idea to the breadth and just how, what kind of dominance uh, Android has uh, for these malware guys, uh, it's over 60% uh, of that market. And um, so, you know, only download apps from trusted sources such as reputable app markets. Uh, remember to look at the developer names, the reviews, and the star ratings. Uh, always check the permission uh, that an app requests. Like if you're downloading a GPS program and it's, you know, accessing your phone book, you know, that's a red flag right there. There's no reason for it to access your phone book. 
unless it has a sharing function where you could text somebody or something like that. Um, another thing is um, be alert uh, for any unusual behavior on your phone. Uh, a sign that your phone could be infected uh, might be something like um, unusual like text messages that you're seeing that you didn't send out. Uh, that's usually a good indicator. And then uh, download a mobile security app. Um, there's a bunch of them that they'll scan the phone and they'll look for malicious things. Um, and uh, you know, uh, anything that's known out there, what they do is they create a signature. This way, if that tries to propagate or spread throughout you know, the Android market, uh, it'll let you know immediately upon like downloading it or intending to download it. There's actually a couple, um, uh, just to give you an idea of some of the stuff that's out there. Uh, Shaggy has spacebar. And then um, the the wire, the Skype machine shot. But um, if you do, there's a couple of apps out there. It's um, one is a calendar app. It's called Android uh, JMS JMSanes.a. That's what it's classified as, in uh, all those um, you know mobile security apps. And it's a calendar app that basically sends a text message to a premium number. You know, like those premium 900 numbers. So basically, you'd be charged an exorbitant amount uh, from some random Cayman Island or something like that, um, which is not cool. There's one called SSM, SMS Me Cap, uh, which is a fake comedy app, um, and basically sends uh, malicious text messages to everybody um, in your address book. And um, there's also Droid Kung Fu, which is a malware that's capable of installing its own software and updates. Obviously not good because then it could just run any code that it wants to. And then there's also a DRD Dreamlight. It's capable of sending data back to the attacker. So it could collect some information and then it could literally um, you know, send out you know, your phone number, your contacts, all that bad stuff that nobody wants. Um, and then uh, also in the news is that uh, BlackBerry is said to get some Android apps. They're releasing, uh, they're planning to release um, the first quarter, I believe it is, of the US, um, something called QNX phones. What's special about these um, is that it's gonna run both BlackBerry and Android apps. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, Android has hundreds of thousands of apps in the market. Uh, BlackBerry, you know, uh, just my personal opinion, has always been lacking in that department. They have one or two good things in there. Um, and there's also uh, talks about a possible update to the BlackBerry playbook, uh, so it could indeed run Android apps. Um, I think they're doing this uh, because of declining sales in the U.S., although internationally uh, it is picking up a bit. Uh, also, uh, Android is now the leader in ad impressions, uh, which is pretty awesome. We also have a pie chart on that, um, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you know, Android has surpassed you know total number of mobile devices um, in the actual you know um, market segment for cellular phones, which is good. But what's also good is to see that it's profitable for anybody. Uh, who's writing applications, you know, and usually they're free applications and they're supported with ads. You know, this way we don't have to shell out a couple of dollars every time we want to try an app. Uh, what a lot of developers are doing is they're combining the ad sales and then they have a donation or premium version that, you know, you pay a couple of dollars for, uh, which was interesting as well. Uh, a popular game like uh, Angry Birds uh, they generated over a million dollars a month just from ad impressions. So uh, that should motivate a lot of developers and uh, a lot of people, you know, to use the Android platform versus, say, you know, the Apple iOS platform. And then uh, I'm sure you heard of it already. Uh, Google buys out Motorola Mobile Division for twelve and a half billion dollars, uh, which is interesting as well. Uh, some of the shareholders sued uh, Motorola because they thought. That wasn't enough. I think twelve and a half billion dollars is more than enough, um, and uh, it should be interesting to see how this plays out. What kind of um, you know consequences or uh, what's going to transpire for Android in the future from this? Because you know uh, Google has in the past done exclusive uh, you know phone contracts uh, with different manufacturers, most notably HTC and you know Samsung. So uh, we'll see how that plays out in the future. And then also, um, 
there is a gentleman that has recorded nearly 20 hours of Android developer tutorials, uh, videos on how to you know, program for Android, how to make apps. Uh, he has over 200 videos. They're all shot in high quality HD. Uh, if you go to tinyurl forward slash um, Android Dev Tuts, uh, it's in the lower third there, so you could uh, copy it down. Uh, it's gonna link you to the uh, Droid project, um, and there uh, it's gonna have all the information on those videos. So very th big thank you to Bucky, AKA the new Boston, and my bring back. Uh, if it weren't for them, we wouldn't have this. So I'm definitely gonna be checking them out. If you're interested at all in developing for Android, definitely check it out. Should make it way easy for you. And uh, now uh, let's uh, give a quick thanks to our sponsors. Um, first up, we have Mt. Gox, the largest exchange for Bitcoins. If you don't know what Bitcoins are, Google that right now. Bitcoins are the new thing. They also have the Mt. Gox mobile app on the Android market. They're supporting 16 currencies now, something crazy like that. And they have the YubiKey, which provides uh, two-factor uh, authentication for your password. This way it's nice and protected. And it's also provided by BitPay. That's Bit-Pay. Uh, they are the merchant processor for Bitcoin. They were the official processor for the Bitcoin conference that just passed two weeks ago. It's super easy to integrate into your website. You could actually accept payment in Bitcoins and not know anything about Bitcoins. Because you could cash out immediately in dollars, which is pretty awesome. Then it's also provided by Mezzi Grill, uh, mezzigrill.com. It's where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. I finally had the pleasure to eat over there. Amazing food, really good, great hummus. Um, it's a couple blocks south of Columbus Circle at 8th Ave and 55th Street, right here in New York City. Um, and there are worldwide franchising opportunities available. And Carpe VM, seize your market, say it with video. Charlie works closely with you beginning to end to ensure that your video makes an impact. Anything that has to do with uh, your image and uh, who you are and what you represent as yourself or a company, uh, Charlie is gonna work with you. They do amazing work. Um, and it's video on the web that's ideal to engage your viewers. Um, so very big thank you to all of our sponsors. If it weren't for them, we would not be here. And now to talk about what we came here to talk about. I have some uh, Android uh, security apps that I want to go over. There's basically two, um, the two main ones that I want to go over. And it's, it's pretty cool. It shows you a little bit about security and also gives you a wow factor because most people don't know that you could actually do this with Android. And uh, what they are are um, penetration testing tools uh, for uh, Wi-Fi routers. And uh, basically the way that they're able to work is there's some sort of flaw in the way that um, the default SSID, the SSID is, um, you know, when you're looking for a Wi-Fi network, that's a name that shows up. Usually it's something cryptic if it's the default one, or it might say, you know, like Linksys or Netgear router or something like that. Uh, of course, you know, you could change it. Um, now, the flaw comes when you just hook up a router and you use the default SSID, that display name, um, and you use a default generated, uh, what's called a WEP key. WEP stands for Web Equivalent Privacy. And it's actually very, um, I'm not gonna say insecure, it's more secure than nothing, but it's pretty insecure that it's very easy to crack and um, if you're using the default SSID and the default um, you know, passphrase for that, uh, which is you know, just a bunch of ASCII characters, which are zero to nine, A, a through F. And if you have one of those, um, there are applications that could actually see what the default is. And if it's the default, sometimes it's able to calculate what the correct key is for that. So this is a great way to test um, your network security at home. Make sure that you're not using an insecure password or a flawed password that's easy to crack. And also, just as a general tip, nothing to do with Android, if you're at home, use WPA versus you know WEP. WPA is more secure. 
it's a little tougher to crack. Um, you know, depending on how simple the password is, it could still take a few minutes. But if you have a decent password in there, uh, it should take considerably, considerably longer time for that. So let's jump right into it. Um, so uh, we have uh, router keygen and WPA tester. Uh, now I know uh, they basically do the same function, but uh, what I want to do is I want to go over first with WPA tester because I know that this didn't find anything, uh, but uh, router keygen did. So basically it has a disclaimer, you know, don't do this for any illegal purposes. You know, uh, it's okay to test your home network, but you know, don't go around, you know, your whole block trying to get free internet or something like that. It's not going to work uh, from what I find. And uh, just hit continue and then uh, it's going to allow us to scan. Um, so what this is doing, it's scanning the different SSIDs uh, that we have over here. So you'll see that uh, most of these show up uh, with the red lock on there. They're WPA. So this application is not capable of testing them over here. And if it weren't for that stupid ad, um, we could see over here. Oh, let's uh, scan this again. Live television over here. Oh, there we go. So let's hit scan again. It did find one. It found the Netgear. Uh, but why would you put the ads on there? You see, this is something that developers need to look out for because that is not cool. All right. Yeah, so the ad is hiding. It's literally hiding the scan button. Like, how are you supposed to work with this? That is redonkulous. Okay. So here's the Netgear. I actually found two. So here's the Netgear. We have the green light that it's unlocked. Uh, that's because it has no password, so silly me. So yeah, so if it has no password or if it could, it's actually something that it could uh, muster a connection to, it's going to show up in there. And um, so that shows up as a green. Now let's go to, so that's, you could also do a manual mode where you're specifically targeting um, a specific brand of router, like D-Link and all that. Again, this works only with uh, WEP keys that you're using the default uh, SSID as well. So now we have one called router keygen. Uh, router keygen uh, works similarly. Uh, sometimes it's able to pick up a couple of different uh, ones that did not show up in WPA tester. Trying to pull up, uh, we were able to pull one up earlier. It's not showing up. Just wanted to show it to you because um, it was actually able to get the key uh, for these people's Wi-Fi. Um, it's not showing up, the magic of live television. Okay, here it is. So we found one, it's TNR83. Uh, the signal is very low, but we have a green bar over here indicating that it is good to go. Um, so let me just put this over here so you guys can see that much more clear. And then um, if we actually click on it, it gives us the password right there. It's, um, it's in ASCII, of course. So that's uh, 0 through 9 and uh, A through F. And um, I could literally save it to my SD card so I could pull it up later. I could share this. You know, I could send it to my neighbor and say, hey, look what I found. You know, email it or what have you. And um, that's it. That just shows you how easy it is to get somebody's Wi-Fi password. Um, if you're in a densely populated city, um, like, um, you know, just give you an example. I saw this work in Jersey City. Um, we're here in New York City, so it's densely populated as well. Um, you know, you'll get some luck in finding some unsecure ones, but, you know, just download them. It's router key gen and WPA tester. You know, walk around your home, see what you can find. Um, if you do find one, you know, it's definitely a wow factor that you could show your friends. Um, Interesting what you can do with Android. Uh, there's also a review I'm going to do on another application that uh, it's supposed to be released from DEF CON. This past DEF CON, uh, somebody uh, did a similar suite of uh, penetration testing tools, much more advanced than this. And uh, so it would definitely be interesting to play with that. It's supposed to make it easier and accessible for anybody to be able to do it. Of course, there's always white hat, uh, which is you know usually deemed um, anything 
um, you know, good, positive, beneficial uh, to others. There's gray hat, which is sort of in the middle of that. And then there's black hat, you know, which is usually malicious intent. So, you know, uh, all of these are released under the guise of uh, white hat tools. So, you know, use them as such. Don't try to do anything illegal. If you actually, um, you know, break that password and, and you get in there, you know, there could be legal repercussions for that. So, you know, check your local state law for that. And um, that should do it for this episode of, uh, episode, episode, I'm sorry, of Android Invasion. Um, until next time, uh, we're going to do some quick, uh, you know, tips and tricks for the next episode. Um, some stuff that most people don't know or they're uncommon tips and tricks. So it should be a fun episode and we'll see you next time. So take care, guys, and bon voyage. <laughs>